We're getting started. Okay. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you all for being here. Um, we're sorry about the technical difficulties. We did not have um, this in our bingo card for tonight. Our team has been working for weeks on this presentation and how to talk about this project with the community and how to get feedback from the community. So we're really thankful for everyone who joined us tonight and hung in there as we worked through it. And thankful to the team. Thanks, guys. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Okay, um, my name is Alyssa Billingsway, louder, I'll project. Okay, um, I worked with the Army Corps of Engineers San Francisco District, um, and I'm gonna be facilitating the meeting tonight. Um, you'll hear from folks from Coastal Conservancy, Army Corps, and uh, Valley Water. Um, before we get started, I would like to uh, introduce Director Richard Santos, um, Vice Chair of Valley Water Board of Directors. Um, and he represents District 3, uh, which includes a portion of Sunnyvale, Santa Clara, and El Piso, where this project is going to be located. Um, he was first elected in uh, 2000 to serve um, on the Valley Water Board. Um, and Director Santos is also a native of El Piso and has volunteered in the community for many years. So I will turn over to him. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Anyway, I'm Richard Sanford, your director of the Santa Bell Water District. And like many of you, I had meetings all day today and just got over here just a little while ago. And I was glad we're late because it was on time. <laughs> I used to come here years ago, and now this park is fabulous thanks to the city of Sunnyville. Great job. So, thank you, Ali. Thank you very much. Before we get started, I got to introduce a few folks that came tonight. So bear with me, it'll probably be out of order. But I want to take the time to introduce retired Lieutenant Colonel Puffer. <laughs> He's the one who started this whole program with us years ago. So thank you and appreciate your service. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 31 years, Army. Um, also, we have uh, the uh, manager, or I would imagine on the higher rank, whatever, Neil Hitchcock. Is he here? Neil, thank you. We got to talk to you and we just back to made a presentation Saturday to the uh, Silicon Valley Coalition. I think about 60 members came out and it was really good. Thank you. We also have Mayor Larry Pine. Council member Richard Melvin. The new vice mayor, Mary Sheriffon. Then we have is is the virtual meeting is Santa Clara Council, Captain Wanabi. Hi, Kevin. We also have a council um, member of Karen Hardy. And also not who staff, not who staff on behalf of Mayor Pat Solwell. So thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. I do want to take the time for our staff to say thanks because they had meetings all day with me and had to run over over here to some of our staff. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Mike just gave me some letters to read and little notes, and I didn't read my glasses, but I'm okay. We'll make it. <laughs> anyway, the shoreline project, it, it's, a, it's very, very important. And uh, it's uh, about $500 million. You'll learn more. And, Water victory is for about 100 million, and we just got 92 more million for the U.S. Army Corps. So thank you, appreciate that very much. The health and safety of our neighbors are important to us. So completing this uh, project will help bring relief to the neighborhoods and benefit from the level of flood protection, environmental restoration, and the historic salt ponds in the area provided by this project. I've been a flood victim myself, born and raised in Alviso. Major for three times 55, 58, and 83. Devastating four, five, eight feet. So I know what it is to be below sea level, and this would be a major factor. But it's for everybody because if it floods, tidal flooding, we've got to prevent it. We have so many assets We're, other than Levi Stadium. Sad 49 sad, but it was done. <laughs> well, this is very important to us. So the construction on the first phase of the project in Alvisto area began in December of 21. This is an estimated to continue until summer of 2025. The project in Alviso is constructing levees between Alviso Marina and Artesian Slough. Tonight, 
Our focus and presentation is on the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the uh, assessment of the coastal flooding risk, Bay between Permanente Creek and Guadalupe Slough, which includes parts of Mountain View, Sunnyville, Santa Clara, and San Jose. During today's presentation, please ask questions and give us your comments. We welcome your input. We want this project to reflect the community's values and the needs. Thank you again for all coming. And I'll hand it back to the Army Corps of Engineers. Thank you all. All right, thank you, Director Santos. Um, as we share, our goal for today is to learn about this area, about this community, um, about you all. And the reason for that is that you all, as uh, residents and people who live, work, and spend time in this area, know it better than you know the Army Corps of Engineers might know the area. So um, we want to uh, learn from you all and kind of integrate your feedback so that the solutions that we come up with to issues of flood risk uh, to habitat loss and opportunities for improved recreational access are better and reflect the values and needs of the community. Um, so we had an agenda, a really um, thoughtfully laid out schedule. Um, we are going to allocate roughly a half hour uh, to presenting. We're going to have time for Q&A. Um, and then we do have stations set up. We've got four stations around the room. If y'all would like to hang and talk to staff and ask some more specific questions, interact with the maps we put together. We would love to have you all stay, um, but understand that it is getting a little late. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we'll go through introductions. Um, we'll talk about a study overview, and then we'll specifically talk about how you can get involved um, with this study. Fine. Um, for folks who are on Zoom, um, there's kind of two ways to interact with the Zoom platform that we want to call your attention to. One is to um, raise your hand during the Q&A, um, and then we will unmute you and you can share your question or your comment at that time. Um, the other is to add your questions or your comments in the Q&A box by clicking on that icon at the bottom of your toolbar. Um, we are going to not take any questions or comments until we get to that portion of the agenda. Next slide. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Tessa Beach, who is our planning chief, and she's going to introduce the Army Corps and our partners. Safe love and good evening, everyone. I am thrilled to be here today to kick off this important study, and I want to express my gratitude to you all for taking time out of your schedules to come and be here with us tonight to share your input. As Director Santos and Lud pointed out, we are really interested in getting your input and hearing how you experience flooding, opportunities that you see for ecosystem restoration, and anything else you think we should consider in formulating this study. I'm also really excited that we have a great interagency team working on this study together with team members from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, San Francisco District, Valley Water, and the California State Coastal Conservancy. Next slide, please. And while our study team is larger, we have a number of team members here in the room today that I'd like to introduce. So again, I'm Tessa, I'm with the Army Corps of Engineers San Francisco District, and with me from the San Francisco District, I have Ann, Lexi, who's here in the room and also gonna be monitoring the chat for questions and comments by our online virtual participants. Also from the Army Corps, we have Michael Mercado, we have Stephanie, and we have Neil. From our partner at the State Coastal Conservancy, we have Shawnee. And from Valley Water, we have Katie and Aaron. Next slide, please. So now that I've taken time to introduce the study team here in the room, I'm gonna take a minute to deep dive a little bit more into the US Army Corps of Engineers as an agency and what we do. The Army Corps of Engineers is a federal agency, and our primary mission is to plan, design, construct, and operate solutions to some of the nation's most complex water resource challenges. Now, while we have engineers in the title of our agency, we're not all engineers. We have biologists, economists, project managers, cultural resource specialists, real estate specialists, 
contracting officers, and a whole host of other disciplines that work together in an integrated fashion to deliver solutions to water resources challenges. And at the San Francisco district, we're not just employees of the Army Corps of Engineers, we're community members. We live, work, and play in the communities that we serve. The San Francisco district's area of operations extends essentially from Monterey, just past the border of Oregon, and it hugs the coastline all the way up. In addition to our primary mission of water resource solutions, we also have a number of additional mission areas. We have a regulatory arm that permits construction along waterways and wetlands under the Clean Water Act. We also operate and maintain flood control and recreational facilities. These are dams and their associated lakes that many across the nation recreate at. And finally, we have a primary mission to support both state and federal emergency management and response activities, such as those that would take place after a natural disaster. So, I'm thrilled to be here tonight. I'm thrilled to be here with our partners, and I really thank you again for joining us to provide your input. I'm going to turn it over now to our partner at Valley Water, Erin Baker, to talk a little bit more about her agents. Thank you, Jensen, and then we'll uh, I'll echo, echo Hudson's thanks for everyone for being here tonight. Um, so just a little bit about Valley Water. Valley Water's mission is to provide Silicon Valley with safe, clean water for a healthy life, environment, and economy. So we do that by ensuring clean, reliable water, providing flood protection, and also through uh, environmental stewardship. Um, so we serve about 2 million residents in 15 cities in the county. With respect to water supply, we provide water to 13 local water providers who, um, such as City of Santa Clara, City of Sunnyvale, City of Mountain View, who then provide water to the residents. Um, Valley Water is also the flood protection agency for Santa Clara County, so we build projects and we run programs to um, help protect lives, homes, and businesses in Santa Clara County from flooding. And then our third focus area is uh, being good stewards of the environment. So taking care of our streams and our watersheds. Um, and the project we're here for tonight is really centered on the flood protection and stream stewardship parts of our business. And so with that, I will turn it over to Shalini to talk about uh, Coastal Conservancy. Hi everyone, I'm Shalini Kenman and I'm with the State Coastal Conservancy. Um, the Coastal Conservancy is a state agency that funds and facilitates coastal restoration, protection, public access, and climate resilience projects. And our jurisdiction is shown in this map. Um, it's the entire coast of California, including coastal draining watersheds and the San Francisco Bay coast. And um, we work collaboratively with many partners including the ones here, but other public agencies as well as nonprofits, tribes, and community-based organizations. And um, we, work with, we work with these partners to get our projects in the ground. Uh, on this slide, you'll see some of our main projects here in the South Bay. On the right is the South Bay Salt Pond Restoration Project, which we partner closely with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and California Department of Fish and Wildlife on, as well as other partners. And this is the largest tidal wetland restoration project in the West Coast. It's converting former salt production ponds to wetlands. And when complete, will be 15,100 acre, 100 acres of ponds converted and restored. And the goals of this project are to restore wetlands for endangered species, fisheries, and birds, to provide public access trails and amenities, and to manage flood risks. And on the right, you'll see various trails that the Coastal Conservancy works on, including the Bay Trail and Ridge Trail, which a lot of people have heard of. They're linking the entire bay um, along the shoreline and along the ridgeline. And the Water Trail, a little bit lesser known, is a network of small boat, like kayak launches and landings around the bay so people can access the bay by water as well. Um, just want to say thank you to everyone for being here, spending your free time to get involved with your community projects. We're really glad to have you here, and I'll pass it off to Alyssa. Thank you, Shalini. Um, 
All right, so we would love to hear a little bit about you all and everyone in the Zoom virtual space. We have this icebreaker. Um, we just have a few questions if y'all are interested in engaging. Um, you just have to take a photo of the QR code um, and you'll see these three questions come up. The first one is, what do you love about this community? Um, second is, how long have you lived in the area? And third, what are you hoping to learn today? Um, and we're going to give you all a few minutes to fill out those questions, and then we'll take a look at the responses together. For folks who are in the Zoom space, if the QR code is not working, you can go to menti.com and enter in the use code, which is 4471903. Okay, well, then maybe this is going to be even more interactive than we anticipated because we have to be on airplane mode. So we'll let the folks in virtual land fill it out. But I'm going to open the floor and see if anyone wants to take a stab at one of these questions. What were the questions? The questions are, what do you love about this community? How long have you lived in the area? And what are you hoping to learn today? And you can pick which question you want to Well, I'll share that I've lived in the Bay Area pretty much my entire life. Not in Sunny Hill, unfortunately. I've been a mostly stay girl, but uh, took a little detour for 15 years up in Sacramento. Um, so I love the Bay Area. I love the weather. I love. I love. Uh, I love that I don't have to sweat <laughs> summertime after you know Sacramento Dentures for a few years. Um, but then, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, I was born in Montana. So then I told you, so I knew the very same The Rose Jacobville Coast, this, that. And uh, so I've lived here 55 years. And what I'm hoping to learn is how do I save a bay trail that I was through. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All right, um, well, we'll see what's going on in the virtual space. Hopefully we were able to fill out the Mentimeter poll. Um, thank you, Lexi. Uh, <laughs> I think it's reconnecting. Oh, it's still showing on Zoom. Okay, but it's still showing on Zoom. So I'll just read it off. Yeah. So I'm showing the results of um, the folks who entered in. Yeah, okay. So in the Zoom land, what we heard is what um, What do we love about the community? The views, the water, the wetlands, the shoreline, small town people, topography, wildlife, access to recreation, beautiful people, weather, access to open space, Recreation, there's a lot of things here. Uh, location in the Bay Area. Um, can we go on to the next panel? Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay, so we got a few people who have been here all their lives. Uh, quite a few people who have been here for 30 plus years. Great. And the next one? Okay, what are you hoping to learn today? Let's see. Um, why do we need this project? I'm hoping to learn about how to get more involved. That's awesome. We're going to answer those questions. Safety, sea level rise, flood protection, how the projects can get studied quickly, hearing people's ideas for the future shoreline. Great. Um, what are the plans for protecting the shoreline? This is my first scoping meeting. That's awesome. It's also Lexi's first scoping meeting. <laughs> um, all right, let's scroll down. Okay. We want to learn about restoring wetlands and creeks. Uh, as well as possible, recreational and nature viewing and on the Bay Trail and levees, how this very long project can reach all of its goals. Excellent. Opportunities for flutters management. Great. Thank you all. Thanks for filling that out for us. Um, okay, so we are going to shift into um, information around the study, and I'm going to turn over to Ann Baker, who is our environmental planner with the Army Corps of Engineers. Hey, Ann. Hi. <laughs> hey, everyone. How's it going? Um, go ahead and uh, 
pop over to the next slide. So um, this is just a you know sky level view of what the area that we're talking about here. Okay, um, this is um, we're standing up on up on a high hill there overlooking the salt ponds. Um, you can see the uh, the Sunnyvale Water Pollution Control Plant uh, right there. Which the idea is we're we're trying to emphasize the interface between the bay and the urban environment, right? This is an area that has a lot of critical infrastructure. Uh, Moffett Field is right in this area. Uh, you know, Google, Lockheed Martin, uh, there's a lot of industry and a lot of um, city resources in this area that, you know, we're taking a look at and trying to, trying to wrap our heads around, you know, what is potentially at risk in this area and what potential solutions might be out there to try to protect this infrastructure. Um, so next slide. Um, so, and, and we also, you know, we want to acknowledge straight from the start here, um, we're not the first people to come out, right? We know we're kind of the new people coming into town and, you know, uh, throwing our, our, our elbows around. So we, you know, these are um, a few of the local planning efforts that we've been reviewing as part of this initial information gathering phase of the study. Um, and, and we wanted to acknowledge, acknowledge some of these because they're great resources. Um, but also, um, you know, we want to know if there's what we're missing. So if there's any big projects, studies, local efforts going on that we're not tracking, we would love to hear about it. So, because um, I mean, our goal is to integrate you know, as much information as we can from others doing work. We don't want to just come in and, and start, you know, with a blank slate. We want to know what other people think is going on in this area. Uh, next slide. So you'll see these maps around the room with the various stations. Um, this lovely little squiggle that kind of looks like the state of Kentucky is our study area. Um, the black box is around our study area. Um, uh, as you can see, it's, you know, the northern half of the study area is primarily the salt, salt ponds. Um, the southern half is, is here, is Sunnyvale, portions of Santa Clara, uh, portions of Mountain View, and uh, these are, you know, this, the southern kind of line there is, isn't just completely arbitrary, it's, little, it's based a little bit on some of the historic, like, not historic. The the uh, like the flood mapping that's gone on in the past. So um, we you know that line was set based on kind of where we have historic have thought that perhaps there might be some flood risks to address. So um, so it's not like just arbitrarily cutting off half of Sunnyvale. It's just that's that's about the extent that we think that there could be climate change impacts, sea level rise, you know, coastal coastal flood impacts to the community potentially. Uh, next slide. So um, this is kind of reflecting what Alev was saying earlier about you know why are we here, right? So this study that we're we're really just at the starting point here, where you can see our little gold star there showing, showing where we are in the study process. Um, so our you know our goal of this is to do um, is to look at uh, multi-purpose solutions for coastal flood risk, ecosystem restoration, and potentially integrating some recreational opportunities into whatever kind of a project we can develop out of those solutions. And our, you know, in, in general, our study area is um, east-west um, from Permanente Creek to the Guadalupe River, Guadalupe Slough. Um, and uh, as we've mentioned, you know, in, in Santa Clara County and portions of Mountain View, city of Santa Clara, and primarily Sunnyvale. Um, so the, it, this, this, this little flow chart on the bottom, which I imagine is probably pretty hard to read for you guys, sorry. Um, so what, this is kind of a, a very general look at how we approach studies in the Army Corps of Engineers. So, you know, the first box there is, is telling you, you know, we're, we're at, we're at step one of our study. We're trying to understand the current conditions in our study area. Um, we're, we're trying to find the, the problems we're trying to address. And that's, I mean, 
love your expansion, how did that degrade? Because these are the big picture problems. Like we're trying to nail that down a little further to define kind of the extent of, of, of the flooding and and you know the opportunities out there for habitat restoration and recreational opportunities. So so right now we're in information gathering mode. We're, you, you, we're we're trying to make sure that we understand how this project might affect the community and how we can take those take take concerns and ideas into account as part of our planning process. So um, once we kind of finish this information gathering mode, then um, we will start developing the solutions. So, and we often call those like our, our, our technical terms, our measures and alternatives. We develop measures and then combine measures and make alternatives. Um, and once we've kind of once we've developed those, then we will go back and evaluate them and we'll look at, you know, what kind of environmental impacts might they have, what kind of economic and social benefits might they have for the community. Um, and then we'll, we'll, once we kind of define all of that and write all that up, we're going to release a draft report, come back to the community again, present to you our, our potential solutions and what we think kind of our, our project is going to end up looking like. Um, and then, um, you know, seek input from you, ask me to comment, ask me to tell us what you think about it, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, so that we can go back and do another round of I off camera. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, so that we can go back to the drawing board, uh, refine that those, those solutions a little bit further with your input, and then we will write up a final report. And we will, um, and we, because of the way our agency works as a federal agency, we have to then submit our final uh, recommendation to Congress, and Congress then decides whether or not to give us uh, permission to go out and do it. So, uh, so that that's kind of the end of the study phase, and then that leads into with congressional uh, permission, with congressional approval, and then funding in a budget. Then we can come out and construct a project after that. Um, but currently, we're pretty focused on um, the study phase for for this uh, this area, the Sunnyvale area. Next slide. So, as I mentioned, first problem: flooding. <laughs> so, this is a uh, a sea level uh, rise map that is based on NOAA data, um, National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration data um, for uh, sea level rise for one foot of sea level rise prediction uh, through in 2050. So this is about, you know, 30 or so years into the future is this is what NOAA is predicting the sea level rise is looking like. Um, you know, this is something you all hear about all the time, right? This is, you know, these these are just some of the many headlines we found as far as, you know, sea level change being a problem in the Bay Area and looking for long-term solutions. Um, so as part of our defining of the problem, our engineers are going to be doing a bunch of studies and models and trying to kind of uh, hone in on um, on um, what, what level of sea level rise is a reasonable assumption for us to consider as part of this study and how, and, and basically where kind of the, the, the there would be a, a interest in putting in some flood, flood prevention measures. Um, so next slide. So problem two is habitat loss, as we've talked about. Uh, so this map that you can see on the side here, this is, uh, a map of the bay and the amount of tidal marsh habitat that's been lost over the last 200 years. So the green is the historic 200 years ago salt marsh. The red is what we have left. So it's a it's a tremendous amount of loss. I really wish I had a number for it, like 95 percent or so. I don't I don't have real numbers. So but so the map I think tells the story pretty well, right? Um, and and what does that do to our ecosystem? Well, it you know all of at, at, you know it's the circle of life, right? All of these critters rely on each other. So um, what the the result is that as we lose habitat, we also find ourselves with listed species, threatened and endangered species. Like you know this and that and that's what this flow chart here is intended to show: the salt marsh 
harvest mouse, I can say it, um, is, is, you know, the top of the, of the, of the, of the chart there. And you can see how it integrates and, 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 and interplays with all of the other aspects of salt marsh habitat and all the other critters out in the salt marsh habitat. But uh, the salt marsh harvest mouse <laughs> is, uh, is a listed species under, under the Endangered Species Act. So uh, by looking for opportunities to restore salt marsh habitat, it should also help enable the recovery of some of these impacted species. Next slide. So I, you've heard us talk about the salt ponds a lot. So just, you know, what, wanted to take a step back and talk about the background of the salt ponds for you guys. Um, so, uh, you know, so these salt ponds have all, I mean, even salt marsh has always, uh, uh, water evaporates from the ponds and then leaves salt behind. And that salt has been harvested for commercial use for industry. Um, the salt production here in the Bay was industrialized in the mid 1800s. And what these salt companies came out and, you know, basically built these berms and levees to like, uh, to section off and reclaim parts of the salt marsh to commercially produce salt. And um, that was, you know, 150, 200 years of salt production commercially until about 2003-ish, uh, um, the federal government, you know, as the salt, salt companies were kind of going out of, or, you know, turning, turning lands back over to the government. Um, the, the many of the salt pond salt ponds that went out of business were transferred to Fish and Wildlife Service, um, and they that's why they have started you know with the Coastal Conservancy um, restoring the salt pond the, the the salt ponds to tidal marsh habitat. So, um, but you know that this salt production is part of the natural habitat, and you know it's it's worth noting that you know going back hundreds and hundreds of years, even like the Native Americans used to use these salt ponds as, as, as to collect salt. So um, that is an excellent way for me to segue over to my buddy, Stephanie here, who is our cultural resources lead. She's gonna tell you a little bit about the historical and archeological conditions in the city area. Sam, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to briefly talk about um, how important cultural resources and consultation are during the project planning process. Um, first, I'll just briefly describe what a cultural resource is because there's a lot of definitions under this umbrella. So this includes historical sites, it includes the historical salt ponds, it includes archaeological sites, um, and it also includes Native American religious practices, um, social uh, these sites that social communities appreciate and value, and other cultural practices such as fishing, which is important socially to local communities. So in order for the government to find out what these cultural resources are and why they're important to people, we need to be talking to you, the public, we need to be um, consulting with our Native American tribes who have been living here for millennia. And we also need to reach out to historical organizations and just anybody who has any interest or concerns relating to anything cultural. Um, so the next slide. Um, I will just quickly review some of the cultural resources that we already know are in this area. So um, this is a map of, you know, the shell mounds that used to be so prevalent in the Bay Area. You know, in the early 20th century, there were over 400 of these sacred Native American sites. You know, today there's less than a handful, um, but there are 11 of them that we know about that used to exist right here in the study area. So we do know that there is this sensitivity that we need to be really careful about because even if they're not still visible on the surface, they're still present um, underground. So we need to be aware and do what we can to identify those and protect them. Um, we also have two historic districts within the project area. We have historic landscape, the salt ponds, like I said. So we do just want to make sure that we know about this history and we document it really well before we change any land uses or um, other, other values with these landscapes. So um, we, like I said, we will just continue to consult throughout the entire project uh, planning process, which is, you know, the next couple of years. And uh, thank you. Thanks. So um, next, I mean, this, we're really just, you know, reiterating the opportunities we're looking to, uh, to, to find in this area, you know. Um, as I've mentioned, you know, we're looking for multi-purpose solutions. We're looking for um, 
for a project that might provide multiple benefits at once. So for example, you know, um, uh, actually next slide, that'll help. <laughs> that'll, that'll help me for example. <laughs> So, you know, historically, the Corps of Engineers has often been known for our, what, what, what is, what we kind of casually call our gray solutions, right? These are, these are your conventional engineering, your levees, your flood walls, your dams. Um, and that's, you know, for hundred, hundred years, the Corps has been very good at doing gray solutions. But as we're moving more and more into the modern era, we've begun to really see the value of implementing nature-based solutions and uh, what we call engineering of nature. And um, under engineering of nature, we look for opportunities to integrate what we call green solutions with our gray solutions. Um, sometimes we call them hybrid solutions. Um, and you know, hybrid solution would look more like you know, a levy with restoration in front of it. And part of you know the value that comes from implementing nature-based solutions can also provide the flood benefits. Marsh is a natural sponge; it soaks up flood waters. So the more that's one of the reasons why we've seen such an increase in in flood risks around the bay because of the salt salt marshes. So there there is an opportunity here to try to find a hybrid or a green solution that would both provide that, you know, in that, that flood protection infrastructure while also trying to uh, restore habitat, uh, you know, create a more sustainable, resilient bay, and, you know, maybe, maybe get some fun recreational features out there too. Next slide. So this is an example of a, um, a hybrid solution that you we, we sometimes see around the bay. Uh, this is something that they're that they've got planned for out in the uh, Albizo Al 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 area. Um, so this is called we call this either a horizontal levy or an ecotone levy. And what it is is I'm gonna slide over here and use my finger. <laughs> this gray line right, right here is the levy. So it's a traditional flood protection levy. Um, but instead of just leaving it as this trapezoidal dirt mound out there that's 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 solely you know there to protect you, they've put a, a bike trail on top of it. And then they've filled in uh, below the levee towards the bay with uh, varying layers of habitat. So transitioning from that top of levee prism all the way down into the bay waters. So this a, a feature like this provides that stable flood feature, but also provides that habitat restoration moving down to the bay and the salt marsh habitat and all of, all of that good stuff for the, for the listed species. Go ahead and next slide. So the other point that we wanted to make uh, is that it's not a one shot fix all situation, right? We can do different things and we can mix and match them. This is just an example. This is not like an alternative we developed or anything like that. We haven't even started. We're, we're just at, at the starting line here. But the idea behind showing you this map is, um, again, it's all good though. Uh, so this, um, these light green lines down here by uh, Pond A4, and, uh, these are ecotones, right? So that's the solution I was just talking about here. Uh, and then this uh, yellow line that goes right off the field, that's uh, a traditional flood, flood left, right? And those two solutions can combine to create kind of what we call a line of resilience along the shoreline. Uh, but maybe, you know, maybe there could be some challenge of getting the funding to implement a, a pro project like that. What can we do in the meantime? Well, if you go out here to the bay, bay side, these are some ponds that are, are very ripe for habitat restoration. And that habitat restoration can also provide flood benefits. So, you know, that could be an interim solution. Or, um, you know, this red line here is supposed to represent some of the, those salt pond berms that we've talked about that were implemented uh, by, the, by, the, by the salt commercial uh, units. And like, we could restore, we could, maintain or build up that firm to create kind of an initial buffer out in the shoreline. So the idea there is we could take 
a variety of different solutions, mix and match them to create like an integrated solution that takes that, that puts a bunch of different things together. So that's that that's just one example of us trying to get a little creative, trying to trying to think of thank you. Sorry, I keep walking around <laughs> causing problems for the tech folks. Sorry. Um, but that's that's a, just an example of some potential solutions we could come up with. A combination of multiple different features. Uh, and that we're just trying to get your brain sticking. We'd love to hear any ideas you guys have, what what kind of opportunities you see for us out there, what's important to you. Uh, so go ahead and next slide. Um, before we move into how you can help us. Uh, uh, sorry, I just I can't help being a little cheesy, a little silly sometimes. Uh, before we get into how you can help us, I just wanted to acknowledge that we have a whole bunch of other agencies that have been partnering with us and helping us. Um, we, uh, we've we been holding meetings with, or we, we have held meetings with a lot of these agencies to seek their input. Uh, some of these are agencies that have land interest in the area, a lot of interest in, in the project. Some of them are agencies we're gonna need permits from. Um, so, and, you know, some of them are here in this room, city of Sunnyvale, city of Santa Clara, you know. So um, we, we would just want to acknowledge that there's a lot of people out there with a lot of interest in this and that have been giving us a lot of fantastic input and we really appreciate all of that. So thank you. Next slide. So how can you get it help us? How can you get involved? This is just um, to give you an idea of our long-term timeline. So this uh, that top flow chart matches the one I was talking about earlier where we're um, we're talking about our process for developing potential solutions and then evaluating them and bringing them back out to you guys. We just wanted to give you a, um, a, a target for what we're looking at. So um, in general, the Corps of Engineers, uh, we, we try to do a study within three years. Um, that's our target. However, we rarely make that target. <laughs> so it's very possible that this could change, but this is based on a three-year schedule. So um, our current three-year schedule would have us, um, you know, we're, 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 you know, you see our star for today. That's that's our, you know, reaching out to you guys. Um, we're gonna have a uh, comment window open from now uh, through mid-March. Although you're welcome to comment at any time. We're gonna be giving you lots of resources to provide us input. But uh, in in order to inform the current efforts that we're undergoing. March is kind of our target for when we need that input by in order to integrate up front, at least. Um, and then we're going to go back to the drawing board and we're going to start to develop those solutions and uh, evaluate them. And then we will write up a draft report and come back to you. And right now, the, that target date is likely no, no sooner than early 2025. So about this time next year, we'll probably take about a year to develop those solutions and evaluate them. And then we'll come back out again. We'll come back out and talk to you again. We'll invite you to come back and hear about what solutions we've come up with and tell us what you think about them. Um, and then we'll go back again <laughs> and, you know, clean them up, take into account your input, you know, revise as needed before we send a final report to Congress requesting approval for a project. And that right now, the target date is likely no earlier than 2026. Um, and that, and, and it's beyond that, that we would end up constructing something. So, um, once it goes to Congress, there's usually, they, uh, they issue authorizations every two years for new projects. And then, um, usually takes another year or so on top of that before we even get funded to start design construction. So it's, it's going to be a little while before we're actually on the ground building anything in this area, but, but that gives us lots of time to talk to you guys. Hear what we uh, hear what's going on. Um, so uh, you'll see this uh, a lot over the at all the tables at our little comment cards in the back of the room. But we have a project email address that you can submit comments to. Um, it's uh, Shoreline Study, all one one word, no no spaces, at usace.army.mil, and you email that. That's going to be there for at least the next couple of years. So you can email that anytime you want to reach out to us. Um, and then uh, next slide. Um, did you like to do on this one? Or should I just keep going? I'll keep going. Okay, um, feedback stations. So as, as I mentioned, 
or as Ella mentioned at the beginning, we have four different stations that we're going to be setting up around the room. Each of these stations has a map on it with post-it notes and stickers and Sharpie pens, and we would love if you would come around to these tables and scribble on our maps and tell us what you think. Tell us uh, where you like to recreate. Tell us um, where you're concerned about there being a need for habitat protection. Tell us where you've seen flooding. We really want to know that. We really want to know, you know, we just had a storm, what, last week? It was crazy. That wind, nuts. <laughs> but uh, we, you know, we, our models can only tell us so much. So we want to know, like, where, you know, you where you've seen the intersections flooding, where you've seen waters coming into your backyard. It's like anything that you can tell us about how you are currently experiencing flooding is so helpful for us. So helpful. Um, and, you know, any general feedback you have for us. Um, we have just a general map over here. Where do you live, work, and play? We let, you know, that helps us. Like, it helps us to know how you guys use this area. So, um, so please, you know, feel free to wander around at the end of this meeting. Come talk to us. We'll have people at each stage. To hear what you think. Um, next slide is you. Yes, that's me. I'm going to try to talk loudly, but for those of you who are online and also for those of you in the room who don't make, who don't get to the tables or who think of other things later on, we have put together an online web tool. So you can either scan the QR code, um, we will provide the link to you, or if you email the shoreline study at usage.army.mil, we'll provide this link to you. It's also linked on our uh, project website, but I'm going to demo it really quickly for you all. It's very simple and streamlined. You still see the screen? Perfect. So if you select the link, it'll take you to this web app. Hopefully it loads, please. Okay, perfect. Um, so it'll pop up with instructions on it. And this is a way where you can drop a point on a map and put a title to it, put a description to it. You can also upload a photo. So you say you have a picture of flooding in your backyard that you want to show us, you can you can upload that at this point. So if you need this instructions, you can take a screenshot of it. Otherwise, when you press close, the instructions will also pop up right here on the left. So in order to drop a point and to leave a comment, you go to this edit on the left side, you select this new feature, and say you saw flooding in the Sunnyvale Baylands County Park. So you can zoom in and drop the point right there, wherever you've experienced flooding, wherever you want, whatever information that you want to provide to us. And you just type in the name, I saw flooding here. And you can provide any description you would like. And if you want to upload a photo, a picture, anything, any information, you can upload that there. And then you select create. And I am the only one who's able to view any of these points. So whatever you put on there, it's not going to be accessible to other people, the public. It's not going to be accessible to anybody else except for the Army Club team. So whatever you would like to put in, you can. And that is another resource for you to provide information to us. And we would really appreciate any and all information that you can provide. And I will throw it back to Oved or Ian. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, so we will provide, it's so small, I can barely get it more in We will provide the slides to everyone. Um, so if you haven't provided your email on the sign -in sheet, please do so before you leave. Um, and that will include things like the QR codes, um, the links, the email for the Shoreline Study Project Team. Um, we see this as the start to a conversation um, and we are going to be working on this project for the next three years. Um, so we want this to be an ongoing dialogue. Um, the email is kind of a, <laughs> it's not a very personal email, but I promise you if you email, it'll be one of us responding. We're happy to meet. Um, we're happy to uh, do a site visit, talk about your concerns, um, your priorities. Um, so that. Um, we have included more information, more links on how to get information on the study. Again, this is something we will share with you all um, uh, after this meeting. Um, and then I think our next slide is Q&A, right? Okay, perfect. Thank you all. Thanks for your patience. Go ahead.
I'd like to share my experience with the shoreline plans. Yeah. So, um, like 13 years ago, I was working with a farmer in addition to the population of uh, reclaimed land of the center of the treatment plant. And I now realize this is by areas that these are outside of your study, no. previous studies. Um, part of the plan was to have a baby trail off the AP. Yeah. And during the uh, public comment period, it said on um, the web that money is not part of the study, not owned by the federal government, not party bond members, owned by some of the mm -hmm. So I didn't you know, show up. And then later, it found out that they're planning on destroying that. Mm -hmm. but, and I'm trying to fight the federal government, the Coastal Service, everybody trying to save this day trail. This park is. In consideration for three million dollars of funding by the California State Parks through SB 55. And I'm proposing that this drill be allowed and um, proper mitigation through the limelight of the Bay of Journal out of Alpizo County Park. And I've talked to the park users, I've been in any Alpizo community places in Alpizo, uh, with the, within the near big. Uh, across the levee, so I would see Lake up so I would be green. And um, so I'm trying to test for the same as trail. I've got uh, a letter, I've got the uh, write up, this letter from the uh, Congressman Girokana, response from the Fish and Wildlife. Um, this is our purview of the pond, it's saying June 7 May. The uh, pond is supposed to be sold to one of the stakeholders, Valley Water. Uh, that one, I think, is for the city trail. Um, so, yeah, so don't destroy any of the trails. So. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bay trail in Sunnyvale next to the sewer plant. Don't destroy it. Um, keep it yeah. and expand the trails. Yeah. Yeah, I hear the proposal for the park, uh, the uh, right on the bay trail. And just like center of the park, and give you guys a lot of to help out on this issue. Um, but if this trail is allowed, the mitigation for a lot of people out there would be to build habitats within the pond mm -hmm. uh, because it might be displacing habitat. And uh, that was mentioned in the study habitat, I was wondering if it actually costs too much for not to do that part of the study. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'll destroy any existing trails and very scant trails. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We will definitely consider this if we're trying to understand these conditions in the area. Um, and I've been out to favor. You just mentioned a trail that I'm not personally familiar with. Maybe our team is, but if not, I would appreciate it if you could just mark it on the map so we're tracking. Uh, so you know. Um, the yeah. what needs to be protected or restored. Yeah. About. Yeah. Where the blue is concerned about single plant. Yeah, it's, it's so useful to know, like, this trail is important and must be protected um, as we're going through the study process. And then, I guess, then I want to open the floor and see if, three um, questions. sorry, open the floor and see if, um, if Valley Water wants to respond to the question around the pond at this time. Or, yeah, I would love to respond because I didn't know if the alternative going away. Yeah, so you can do nine miles. Yeah, all nine minutes on this part of your life. So, talking about it. And it's a huge measure. I thought it was only done for average. It's just not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, they're trying to look at the whole island. Yeah, so it used to be uh, relatively you know, narrow and the uh, character now is that three way. So, so, so three track. Sorry, just for the interest of time, I, I think um, we'll move on to the next question. Yeah. Um, but we have staff. So we have Valley Water, but they can't really fall. I think it's very useful. So I think it's always So that's how you can see. Can't say what the question was. Okay, I think it was your question about Pond Day 18 and the trails going around. You're negotiating the plan of pond from the center of the center, sorry. Mm -hmm. That's fall part of the price gaps to be wide. So by the water and leave a easement all the way around the be the state park. So you know, maybe some of the lower the price and keep the easement. 
that makes self state park scary. So you're trying you're <laughs> trying to keep the trail around going around the pond, is that yes. so okay? The park. Yeah, it's not at all a piece of the trail, which is more mm -hmm. what's happening in that it's going away that it's still you know, being determined, we're still working through the details of that project, so we don't have um, anything definitive on that at this point. Um, but we can, you know, take that comment into consideration and take it back to the project team to think about as we kind of finalize. I hope I was that. In all these meetings, where no one know about this. Uh, possibly. Yeah, I, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is it, this is the first thing you're you're hearing about this. Um, uh, I might ask Neil if there's been any other project meetings recently, or when the last. This is this is the outside of the study area. I recommend you might come talk to me and come to the breakout session. I can talk to them. It's just very strong. Be on the project. I mean, that's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a separate. It's a separate project, is what I was going to say, and I'm not sure when the last public meeting for that project was. So I apologize if you were not aware of it. But there are staff here from um, from that project who are happy to talk to you about it. Um, I, I think that's just a shy. I was kind of first with it, uh, on and I'm not afraid of the research and the over and around to uh, I just it in that. That's going to be fine after all of the okay, that's so nice. the trail that Dean is referring to is around Tom A18 and it was never open for me. Yeah, the person that might not have Yeah, and I'm sorry, I don't have all the detail. That's not um, again, it's not in this specific project, so I don't have the details of the trail, which is why I was trying to find out what you were asking about, and then we can take that back to the yeah. project team as, as a comment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Other question in the room? Yes, sir? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. Uh, would you like to go ahead? I do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I, I go back a little further. I the first show I thought that the meeting in 2006. So uh, <laughs> this is why I've been in since that time. Yeah. I've been watching the citizens made a big friend. And so uh, I wanted to ask you when I'm aware that this may not be something that you're looking to study, but it, it, the shoreline um, flooding situation is going to be exacerbated as time goes by, as sea level rises, and we have rising groundwater. So, although you're building on the shoreline, are evaluating flood you know, conditions that are near the shoreline with rising groundwater conditions as potentially uh, making it even worse. So that's something that all around the bay, you know, science has moved forward since 2006. We can tell all the science. Pay attention to sure. And I would hope that that's something to take into consideration um, because it can affect a lot of things that happen on the shoreline or up. Yeah. Um, that, that should be considered. Yeah, I think that's a great point. It is like the hot topic right now with all flood risk managers, right? So the question of water and compounded on sea level rise and other factors of flooding. Um, the Army Corps has a new, relatively new definition of flood risk management, which includes the impacts of groundwater. Um, in addition to coastal, in addition to riverine, um, related to this project specifically, I'm going to look to. Um, am I looking to Anne? Yeah. Aaron, sorry, Aaron, come back up um, to respond to that more specifically. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, Anne. Um, yeah. So, so with regards to groundwater, we have uh, as Valley Water is the groundwater man management agency for the county. And we do, our groundwater management group is um, looking into the effects of sea level rise on groundwater emergence. Um, 
they're currently studying it. I believe they're going to have a report available at some point. I don't have the date, but we can definitely follow up with that information um, so once it's available. Okay. So exactly. It's, it's, yeah. Realize technically, you know, let him write me, we have to get it. Definitely, yeah. And, and our groundwater management group is definitely tracking this and, and studying it in detail. So um, hopefully we'll have some some information published on that very soon. All right, thank you, sir. In the back. Yeah, thank you. So the presentation. Yeah. I'd also like the slides you will be sending us. Yes. I know. Binoculars. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. The question I have is I okay, also like the horizontal uh, design. Yes. How far deep, how far along it goes into the bay? Oh, yeah. I actually don't know the answer to that question. I'm looking to the core team who might be able to answer that. The question is around horizontal levees. How far do they go into the bay? Can you speak to like the um, the slope and configuration? yeah, so the answer to that question for the folks on Zoom is that the the uh, width of the horizontal levee or how far it goes into the bay is a function of how tall the levee is. Yeah. Um, but there, it's a very gradually sloping um, uh, slope. Yeah. It looks really cool. It is very cool. We are at the core very excited about that as one of our tools within the green to gray toolbox that we talk about. Yeah. The other question is I know we have two other places for the entire yes. uh, Yeah. Is there any learning from other places we can adapt it to this space? Mm. And then also wanted to know the consistency between the designs uh, amongst the places. Yeah. The question is around the shoreline study phases. So we've got three, right? The the phase one, two, and three, and we're talking about number three right now. Um, and the question is, what is the learning and kind of the knowledge exchange or, you know, how are we integrating stuff from one and two into number three? Uh, again, I'm going to look to Neil, who has been, um, he's actually manages the program that oversees all of these studies. So I'm going to have Neil come up. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so you. So with, with the study um, that we're still early on with, we're definitely going to take lessons learned from um, the work that we've done so far with the construction of phase one and some of the analyses that were done as part of our phase two study. So definitely um, learning from what we've done to date. Okay. How about the consistency? For example, the consistency is the consistent, but also the other side. Is there consistency with what? Um, it, it's, it's not necessarily consistent. It really depends on what the problems, opportunities, and constraints are in a, in a particular study area. And so it really can vary. Okay, question. So if you do part of the production levy, you know, you have to see the other ones that come out at the end, you're going to do it all the way. So, uh, for example, with Sherman Phase 1, We've tied into high ground on the Coyote Creek levee system and then the Guadalupe levee system. And so you have a contiguous from the river uh, uh, flood management project connecting to our coastal flood management project. 
for this study, um, again, it remains to be seen potential um, solutions. That that would be one uh, opportunity to find uh, a high ground. Um, question. There are very recognizing a lot of this project in the Eagle Stadium. Yeah. And looking at those two partners, I was surprised um, two were missing. Okay. So SFPUC, and yeah. I know they're kind of kind of the south end, but it's just a doctor. Okay. It's critical for, you know, for the south bay and the water point. Yeah. And then, and then the county center. Okay. Um, they own, of course, you know, they are the overall land owners for Wind Creeks and they land spark. And so, you know, I was surprised that they're not. I don't, I would, you know, I don't want to slow down this process. That being sure. said, they should be part of partners for being, you know, to yeah. get the first process. Yeah, let's let's make a note of that team at the PUC and um in Clare County. And yeah, we, this is the start of the dialogue. So let's bring that into the conversation. Thank you. Um sorry, I'm gonna take a few questions from the Zoom community just because they've been answered. No questions? Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Um hi, Mr. Miller. I was just gonna add on. Our clients list uh, of Bay Area Water Supply and Conservation Agency, which is essentially the Perkins Bears Union for uh, San Francisco County and East Bay City to buy water permission in the UC. Um, so I would add them on the list, and I'd also like to put the sentence in the channel to speed up very quickly. We're in the midst of a multi million dollar rebuild in our water control plant, which is right on the water. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also got you know, substantial growth slated from Moffat Park, which is again more than 237. And so uh, making sure that this is moving you know, as quickly as, I, as possible is, Great. I think, a really important Thank and you. So, Thanks. Thanks. Are you getting any involvement from like uh, the public, I mean, uh, from the high tech uh, people that are building their Googles? Mm -hmm. uh, and how are we get it in and they're integrating them into the process. Yeah. So they get more part of the process. I mean basically part of the process. Yeah. Um question. I, I need to remember to repeat okay. the question for Zoom. No worries. The question is around how we are engaging uh the people who own land or occupy land adjacent to the Bay, so Google, other tech companies. Um, and we have been meeting with the stakeholders that own land in that um, area. Um, so I think this ongoing conversation, I think maybe what we did is we started a list that wasn't fully comprehensive. And so uh, the partners that we shared on there, you know, there's there's quite a few other groups that we're coordinating with and the great, it's very important. Um, any other questions, comments, feedback? Yes. Yeah. We have recently just uh, last last week <laughs> with with uh, Google and with uh, uh, Lockheed, I believe. So so we are making um, um, we are taking opportunities to have outreach with uh, the commercial interests along uh, the shoreline there, in addition to our stakeholders with the city counties uh, that also have properties along there. So, so that is ongoing, and we will reach out to them uh, more as the project progresses. Okay. And the county was engaged. Okay. Can you say that? Oh, Santa Clara County was also engaged during our design shred or planning shred meetings earlier. In the uh, end of November and December. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you all. We're at 7:30, so we are going to break momentarily. I just want to quickly acknowledge some of the questions we didn't get to in the chat. Um, the first one is around the latest status of the Sunnyvale East Channel Flood Protection Project. Um, and the project website hasn't been updated in over a year. Um, so please be sure to um, submit your questions in um, writing. I've got these um, comment question cards. Um, we'll also send out um, the uh, website and comment tool. Um, and we will follow up related to these um, questions in the chat as well. Um, another one is around... Uh, 
Okay, so Sean had a question around, is the email that you submitted in Zoom going to be on the sheet that you, um, that we are going to use to send out information about the slides? Um, I understand we will have a list of our email, so yes. Um, and then I think we covered all of the questions. All right, um, thank you all for your time. We will be hanging here. I'm not going to close it. Um, we're going to hang here for a little bit and let us know if you want to uh, share more ideas. Thank you.